Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Fei. Welcome to Self Education Online Open Class. Today's topic is how to study pre algebra to lay a solid math foundation. Today, we will talk about why is pre algebra important and what is covered, how to best study pre algebra, and tips on how to work from home with your kids. First of all, let me introduce our teacher today, Dr. Yan. Dr. Yan is a tenure college professor and formerly a postdoc at Stanford and data scientist at Coursera. Dr. Yan has a strong passion for education, especially helping students realize their potential and increase not only their test scores, but also their problem solving skills. She boasts 18 plus years of pedagogical and mentoring experience in engineering, mathematics, statistics, and academic reading and writing to high school, college, and graduate schools in both China and the US. Dr. Yan is serving on the editorial board of two international journals, has published over 40 articles in peer-reviewed top-tier journals, conference proceedings, and books. Her research proposals have won her more than 400K in grants from various federal and state government agencies. Okay, let's welcome Dr. Yan. Okay, thank you Fee, for the introduction. Uh, so that's the start of today's open class. Um, before actually I get into pre-algebra today, uh, I want to uh, kind of uh, take this time to uh, give parents here who are staying with your uh, kids at the same time have to work uh, some tips based on my own experience and uh, talking to um, uh, my friends who are sitting in a similar situation. Um, so I, I assume that most parents here today uh, have children uh, that are kind of currently in the fifth grade or to seventh grade. Uh, so I, I think we're actually fortunate comparing to other uh, parents with younger kids because younger kids need more attention of uh, more time of their parents. Uh, because they because they need you to play with them and uh, get them entertained. However, for uh, students at this age level, probably they already know what they need to be entertained. However, um, I think a lot of parents like myself are uh, kind of really worried that our students, our kids don't have a regular routine. Uh, so I remember day one uh, when I received a notice from uh, my daughter's school that uh, because the school will be um, uh, closed and then all the classes will uh, be turned into online study. And so I, uh, when I had to establish a routine for, uh, for her, at the same time, I showed her my routine because I want to uh, tell her that I want to show her that it's not just um, she needs to be uh, more disciplined and uh, I also need to be more self-disciplined. So establish a regular routine for both uh, yourself and your kids. And uh, you, are, you are a good example um, to show your kids during this, uh, during this time. And also um, have your kids draft their own routine. Again, for, the, uh, for, for a kid who is already fifth grade, um, they should have their um, uh, say in terms of what they think will work best for them. Of course, you can help them to revise. If you don't, if you don't think that their routine is, more if, uh, is effective or uh, you have more things to uh, suggest that they can add on. Um, I made a mistake because uh, I actually made a routine for her and then obviously it doesn't work out and just day one I realized that I'm too uh, I was too idealistic and then she made her plan and then she could stick to her own plan much better than the plan I made for her and also find the uh, find the help them find things that they enjoy doing and educational at the same time um, they really need this time to and not just work on uh, schoolwork uh, because I know for middle schoolers, a lot of teachers do their homework, but at the same time, they really need to enjoy doing uh, things that they usually do. Um, uh, of course, now they cannot go outside. So uh, I know a lot of uh, a lot of girls like drawing and my daughter even, um, uh, she, she uh, did some chalk drawing and uh, over our uh, driveway and then she did chalk drawing on the backyard and now she's doing a lot of things. Okay, so, um, so, so at that time, um, they, they could uh, feel that, um, so although they, now this is a difficult time because they lost their social time with their friends, but at the same time, they can still enjoy doing the things that I usually enjoy, of course not, uh, without going, have to uh, go outside. 
and also be flexible with adjusting their routines when uh, some unexpected things happen. Just like our, uh, just like adults, uh, we always have to constantly adjusting our, uh, adjust our routines because we never we can never expect some things that may happen. Um, okay, so and uh, for them, they are not uh, even adults yet. Um, so uh, we also need to be flexible with if they don't follow the routine sometimes. And finally, just be supporting the patient. And um, again, these are, uh, they are just still preteens and they are, go, they are going through a very tough period. Now, um, so, uh, so we need to be them, uh, we need to be there, support them and um, um, be their strong support and also be patient if um, they don't always obey our uh, commands or if they don't always go with our plan. Okay, yeah, so, um, so that's enough for this, uh, these tips. Uh, I will go to the pre-algebra talk. So these are the outlines I will uh, talk about today. Um, I will start um, can explain you what pre-algebra is. Believe it or not, uh, actually there's no common definition uh, for what algebra is. Okay, so I, I went, uh, I did some search and uh, found uh, like some sources, um, but then just leave like that, okay? Because I don't think we have a common, we can come up with a common definition for uh, pre-algebra. But actually, that that's not important, um, as long as we know that what the pre-algebra covers, okay? And that actually covers a lot of topics. And also, I will talk about why pre-algebra is important and why do we need to have this uh, open class and to share with parents um, the reason why uh, we want to our we want our kids or our students to have a solid foundation in pre-algebra. And uh, finally, of course, probably the most important part for today's open class will be sharing with you how to best study pre-algebra. Okay, so what is the algebra? Uh, like I said, uh, I did some search online and I couldn't find a common definition, although they're quite similar, um, but, it, uh, but some are kind of narrow, some are a little broad. So for example, uh, what I found from Wikipedia is that pre-algebra is a common name for a course in middle school mathematics. In the United States, pre-algebra is usually taught in the sixth, uh, seventh grade or uh, sixth grade or seventh grade. And the objective of pre-algebra is to prepare students for the study of an algebra. And from Khan Academy, and it defines a pre-algebra as all of the basic uh, arithmetic and the geometric skills needed for algebra. So if I combine the definitions I find from different sources, uh, different sources, I can say that basically pre-algebra is a bridge, serves as a bridge between basic arithmetic and the formal algebra study. And we know that some uh, students who are currently in advanced track in their middle school uh, may, st may start starting algebra in, at the end of, or maybe second, uh, term of the seventh grade, and some students may start from uh, learning algebra at eighth grade. Some even wait till the ninth grade. So um, when they start, when they start studying algebra, may differ depending on where they are placed in the curriculum. But pre-algebra is the part they cannot skip, from elementary school to the algebra. Okay, so why is pre-algebra important? Um, we know that uh, studying math is like building a house. Without solid foundation at the bottom, it's very hard for the students to climb. And uh, even if they climb up, and even if they build up, and then with a shaky foundation, things will clap at the, uh, at the top. And I have seen parents who approach me when the students start learning algebra too. Um, they they asked they they were puzzled because um, they told they told me that uh, their kids were pretty good students at middle school uh, con consistently get, uh, getting A uh, in middle school and uh, um, in algebra one but something has changed in algebra two and then students start making B's and then uh, if you don't uh, if you don't watch closely and then they start getting C's. Okay, so the reason why, and of course I find out what topics the students can struggle. Actually the topics tend to struggle are closely tied to uh, the, pre, uh, the topics they learn in pre-algebra. Okay, I know that it really depends on, on the school, how rigorous a school curriculum is, and how rigorous when the school teachers teach uh, the students pre-algebra. But, but basically um, uh, in, in math study without solid foundation in for the uh, for the basic knowledge or for the beginning part of the study, and then things will uh, uh, things will become harder, and then topics will become harder, and the student will suffer at the end. 
And the uh, Greek algebra is also the foundational building block of most middle school math competitions, including the well-known math counts, uh, math Olympia for elementary and middle school students, and the AMC8. And also pre-algebra is even tested in high school standard tests. Um, in particular, I just uh, did uh, some count of the most recent SAT, ACT, and SAT master tests. And actually about 10 questions in ACT are pre-algebra, about five problems in SAT are pre, uh, from algebra, and the two problems in SAT master are pre-algebra questions. Okay, so what does pre-algebra cover? Uh, well, pre-algebra covers a lot of things, and um, uh, so for parents who uh, uh, who probably study engineering and um, uh, engineering or science yourself, and you can see some of the topics actually quite advanced. Um, so here is just basic category, uh, categorization of pre-algebra topics, and uh, today we will not go into in detail for each of the topics. I will just quickly go through uh, what each topic covers. Um, so, so that uh, or like parents or students here can understand what I'm talking about. So for uh, all pre-algebra studies start from properties of arithmetic, including the order of, uh, order of operations, commutative, associative, distributive rules, and when those rules should be applied. And then um, pre-algebra also covers basic number theory. Now, number three is a very important topic. Um, in math study and also a very challenging topic. So for, for pre-algebra, students really need to know um, the divisibility rules, prime numbers, prime factorization, least common uh, multiples and the greatest common factors. And for fractions, they really need to know what a fraction means. Usually it's a visual, they start with a visual presentation of fraction and then different operations of fractions and also compare different fractions to see which one is greater, which one is smaller. And they may also learn a mixed numbers uh, with, for example, one and one half is a mixed number. Okay, now for decimals, they also need to understand the meaning of decimals, some basic arithmetics with decimals, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and the rounding, and the relations between decimals and the fractions. Fractions. And for exponents, uh, they need to know exponent rules and uh, what does negative exponent mean. And then they will also learn how to set up equations and inequalities. Uh, of course, just linear equations and linear inequalities for now. Um, they will learn the nonlinear ones when they move on to algebra one or algebra two. And then, uh, okay, so next big categories are ratio, race, unit, conversion, percentages. Now, these are the questions that I heavily tested actually in ACT and the SAT. Um, I have seen students, even high school students, uh, who struggle with those topics. Maybe they have forgotten those topics, or maybe because they actually did not have a solid foundation while they're learning those topics. But these are usually word problems. Um, and the square roots, um, how to calculate square roots, uh, how to solve square root equations. Now, for basic geometries, they need to know angles, basic angle properties, uh, triangles, circles, quad, uh, quadrilaterals. Um, and how to find uh, parameters, volumes. Okay, and the last two parts in pre-algebra are data analysis, statistics, and the probability. Well, these are my own, uh, own favorite topics. For data analysis and the statistics, you really need to know how to calculate the basic statistic measures. Oh, by the way, this part also uh, is also tested, heavily tested in SAT, uh, SAT1. Um, so data analysis statistics, again, they need to know the basic statistic measures, including mean, median, and mode, range, and they also need to know how to interpret statistical graphs. Um, they also need to know how to, uh, for permutation combination, and for some students, they learn that uh, pretty late um, in, in the pre-algebra. But for basic counting, for example, how when to apply multiplication rules, permutation, combination, and then how to uh, combine the, uh, how to find the probabilities of randomly selecting something under which result in a certain outcome. Okay, all right, so, all right, so how to best study pre -algebra. Okay, so I will um, give some examples of those questions that uh, I like students um, to uh, try and also uh, kind of that demonstrate the type of questions that I think are uh, good questions for students practice. Okay, because that ties into the things that I will share with you, how you can best study pre-algebra. Now, again, because pre-algebra pre is built on uh, students knowing basic arithmetic. 
meaning the numbers, how to combine numbers, additions, subtraction, multiplication, division. So students really have a good number sense. Okay, so a lot of parents ask me, how can I help my students? How, how can I help my kids to have a good number sense? Oh, that actually starts from very early on, right? You want to show them which number is greater. And then uh, when you divide things into different parts, you can start introducing the idea of a fraction. And then, uh, so kids like playing things. Actually, kids are pretty good with numbers. Okay, if you give uh, use good examples to show them to compare the to compare different numbers, which one smaller, which one greater, and then uh, you can introduce the idea of uh, multiplication actually pretty early on because multiplication is just repetition of additions. Okay, so they have to have a solid rhythmic foundation. Um, that does not mean they have to be able to do very quick mental math. Okay, and that's a different story. And I also, I thought, I think it's arguable. And some some teachers don't think that doing like um, you have to, like students have to do the rote memory practice and mental with mental calculation. But maybe if you are you want your kids to later on to uh, participate in some competitions, then mental math becomes very important because it does test speed. Okay, uh, but I but I do want to emphasize that. Uh, when we do mental math, it's some kind of uh, rote memory. However, when we study math concepts, please make sure that or you motivate them to focus on understanding the why part, not memorizing, not just memorizing the how part. Now, how is usually we tell you, okay, if you see this work on this way, and then you see this type of question, you work out and use this approach, okay, and then and then you become. Um, uh, kind of indicating to them, well, if you want to learn better, you just need to have a good memory. You just have to memorize all the different strategies. Uh, but I can tell you that if you focus on, uh, if students start just focusing on memorizing the rules and uh, memorizing how to do certain type of questions, they cannot go very deep because eventually um, they, they cannot just memorize everything. Okay, especially if you want to go deeper, you want to learn more complicated concepts, you really have to focus on understanding why. Okay, and also uh, students really need to uh, willing to think hard, and that means don't give them very simple questions and praise them just for oh you can solve this problem so fast so accurately. Okay, I'll give you a part. Okay, well, at initially when they were young, probably you can do that because you want to motivate them to um, to become more confident with a subject. But as they grow older, they really need to realize that um, if you if they really want to be good at something, they have to be willing to think hard. And they have to be willing to work on hard problems. Okay, that's actually how they can improve. We really become good at something. And they constantly work on well chosen problems. Again, you cannot give them uh, too hard problems uh, without guiding them. Okay, so if you give them kind of challenging problems and then uh, with the possibility that they may not be able to figure out by themselves, but you can give them a hint and guide them through the process. And also don't give them um, very uh, always easy problems. Again, you can give them. Uh, uh, simple problems at the beginning, and uh, maybe to introduce concept and uh, get them get uh, give them a kind of visual uh, feeling of how something works. And then later on, you need to give them more challenging problems. And uh, don't worry that um, motivate kids will not be um, will, will not be scared by hard problems. Okay, if you give them interesting problems, actually they are uh, they are willing to uh, work on those problems if they know that actually working on those problems give them more reward, actually makes them feel more fulfilled, more accomplished than just doing simple problems. And, uh, and also um, for students who are very creative, and if you can tell them that um, like, it is not just one way to solve a problem. Okay, and uh, well, maybe some approaches are not as good as others, but you can try different approaches to the same problem. Because uh, from different approach, uh, the probably you can see uh, you can uh, practice with different parts of the uh, the math concepts. Okay, just always encourage them to think of uh, using different approach to the same problem. Even some problem, uh, some approach actually is not good. You can ask them, okay, why this approach is not good and why this approach is better. And also, um, I think I mentioned that a, a few times in my past open classes um, for students who who like math or uh, who's, uh, for students who are interested in STEM. So that does not mean um, you can just, uh, you, you, can, uh, you, you can skip reading. In, in fact, um, a lot of mathematicians or a lot of very good engineers, um, they, uh, they are pretty good with uh, their reading and they read a lot. Okay, so 
um, well, as you can see, even for um, um, just for math study, just for math, uh, for math course, eventually students have to learn to solve word problems. Some word problems are very long. Okay, so they really need to know how to um, uh, decipher the English words in those word problems and convert them into math. And of course, when I say reading comprehension, that does not mean just reading a novel. You, uh, they, well, maybe ideally you actually want to um, tell your kids start reading a math book. Of course, I will read a math book. Okay, and uh, so they can learn the language. They can learn uh, the math language. They, they can learn how to uh, represent. I, actually, that's the next topic. Um, yeah, uh, the students really need to learn how to express their thoughts. But how do how do they um, how do they know how should they uh, express your thoughts? Are probably using math, math, mathematical thinking and the logical reasoning. Probably they should start learning from the books, unless they have a very good teacher who teach them how she should express your thoughts using mathematical language. Okay, um, I like some books, and uh, maybe later on some parents will ask me, okay, what book should I use? I will. Uh, actually, I, I will show you a book and I will use that book uh, when I teach uh, pre-algebra. Okay, so though, uh, you can read good math books and then you can know, okay, how mathematicians express their thoughts very clearly. Okay, so basically you can self-study by just reading the books if you are motivated enough. And also very important to pay attention to details because I have seen many, many students who can do problems very fast, but makes all kinds of weird mistakes because they either they um, overlook one word or uh, they change addition to uh, the addition to subtraction somewhere during the steps. Okay, all kinds of weird, weird mistakes. It's all because they don't pay attention. They don't pay enough attention to details. Okay, that's something that if you can help your kids to establish early on, it's, it's, uh, it's better. Okay, because it's very hard to change their habits when they become older. So whatever good habits you want them to establish, please help them, help them to establish those habits now. Okay, so like I said, I will show you some problems. Um, I think by looking at time, probably I won't be able to show all the problems. I don't know how many um, uh, kids are here, if most are parents, probably uh, some questions are very uh, trivial for you. I just want to show you that that's how I would approach a, a student or if I teach a course, I approach student with some simple concepts, but the simple problems, but with some very important concepts. For example, if I look at this problem, okay, you're pretty good with mental calculation, probably you can do that very quickly. However, this simple problem uh, does tell us very important thing in, in arithmetic. That's the order of operation. Okay, I intentionally put like a lot of parentheses and the negatives and exponents, um, uh, uh, subtra uh, the, the, the subtraction and the um, uh, multiplications all together in one expression. So to teach students the importance of following the order of operations. Okay, so basically we have to start with parentheses followed by exponents followed by multiplication division and the final addition of subtraction. Okay, so again, this is a, so that's a good example, which looks easy, but entails some complicated or important uh, things that you want to tell them. And then here is the next question. Okay, and probably I, uh, again, I don't know how many uh, parents are here or students here. Maybe you can think about this problem for a few seconds. And again, the problem looks uh, easy, but um, don't do that forcefully. Don't use a calculator, of course. So basically divide 121,000, 121 by 1,001. Of course, the shortcut here, okay? If the only way to do this is to do long division, I probably would not show the problem here. Okay, I like showing students those kind of breathing uh, or um, the thinking provoking questions to get them think. So how, how you do this problem? Wow, have an answer. Let me see. Let me see the chat here. Do I have an answer? Did someone answer the question? 
Okay, now, so how do you do this problem? Right, we see that uh, a repeated pattern, 121. So probably we can do something with 121 first. So how do we do that? And let me use the, oh, maybe I won't be able to use the annotation here. I usually can do annotations with my classes, but basically we can do 121 and the uh, 121,000 and the 121. Uh, we can convert that into, or can rewrite, we can rewrite that into 121,000 plus 121. And then we can factor out 121. So we basically have 121. But uh, we factor 121, and then that becomes, let me see what I can write it. Okay, so yeah, again, I apologize, I can write on it. Um, but we basically can have 121 parenthesis 1,000 plus 1. And that one part, 1,000 plus 1 is 1,001. Okay, so divided by 1,001, then we have 121. So the answer is 121. It's a very simple answer. Okay, the next question is a uh, little bit longer. And uh, so this number, 222,000 and the 222 is equal to the product. So the problem tells us uh, 222,000, 222 equals the product of 37,000, uh, 37 times six, and then what's the product? This, 37 and uh, 37,000 and uh, 0, 37 and 27. So usually uh, when, when I tell students when you start working on a problem, you actually want to look for the patterns. Don't just look at one sentence, okay? And uh, you can look at one sentence and think about how this sentence or this, this piece of information relates to the previous information. So we do see the common part, right, out of these two products. As that, that means if we want to find, um, uh, we want to find this product, 33, uh, 37,000, and the 0, 37, and the 27, probably we can just find a ratio of the two. So basically, we can divide the second product by the first product, and then the ratio is 27 over 6. And then just multiply the ratio by um, 222,000 and 222, and you can find the answer very quickly. Again, don't do rule first. Boy, okay, don't try to multiply them um, because actually it's not tricky. Okay, and again, I use this problem just to illustrate that uh, students do need have a good uh, reading comprehension ability to understand um, what, how they convert this word problem into um, math relations. Okay, the problem in fact is not hard as long as they see, oh, he's basically some ratio and the ratio of two costs, and then they can set up, get some. Um, uh, the, so ratio is basically um, the one number by the number. Okay, so uh, I won't go through this problem, and uh, I want to use a one more example to illustrate the importance of uh, knowing how to express a mathematical, uh, the, the, the mathematical reasoning or the mathematical thinking and the logical reasoning. So for example, here is not a hard problem. Okay, actually many students can do this, but uh, I have seen many students who kind of know to solve a problem. Well, if you tell them correctly, they can tell you the answer pretty quickly. But if you ask them to explain their thoughts, okay, many students actually have trouble elaborating their thoughts because they're not used to using mathematical language to explain their thought. Okay, so usually um, for, uh, for middle schoolers, while well, you actually start practicing uh, at a middle school, and otherwise um, you really have difficult uh, learning, difficult concepts when you move on to high school or when you start learning pre-calculus or under calculus. Okay, so, so this is usually high uh, kind of a tell students, that's how you should express uh, your thoughts in mathematical language. You don't jump steps. You want to, you actually need to write English with mathematical, not law, with, uh, English with mathematical terms to express those thoughts. For example, you need to write we, uh, we need to find this number and uh, also show you the different steps you do. For example, if you subtract a number on both sides and then you say, okay, subtracting x on both sides of the equation, we will have this. And then, and the factoring is also uh, very important uh, math terms. If you factor out term, then you need to know that factoring a term, and then we have this, and then therefore we have the answer. So by forcing students to go through the steps of expressing their thoughts using mathematical language, they will learn much better because they really have to have a very good understanding of 
uh, those terms mean in order to write clear ex uh, clear uh, elaboration of their thoughts before they uh, uh, before they get to their final answer. Okay, getting into a final answer probably is not a hard if a question itself is not very difficult. But actually, you will see if you talk to your kids and uh, for a simple problem, see how many of them can actually write down their thoughts clearly, step by step. Okay, you will see actually most of them probably won't be able to unless you train them or unless you tell them what's the best way of uh, expressing the concepts. Again, how can you learn that if parents cannot guide them? Actually from a good book. So that means you need to find a book book if they are willing to read the book. Okay, they have to be motivated to read books. I find it's very hard to convince a student to read a book. Okay, if they if they feel that, well, why do I need to read a book? You can just tell me. Okay, so um, so now parents, you have to have the patience or the authority so that kids can listen to you. Uh, they are willing to read a book and uh, know how, uh, how how beautiful the language is. Okay, um, and also um, we're actually um, helping uh, just like I said, um, basically, I gave some ideas on how we can um, best help students learn pre-algebra. And uh, actually, it's not just for pre-algebra. And that's for any um, uh, math topics, even for algebra, pre-calculus, and even up to calculus. They, all, all those apply. Okay, you have to have a good foundation. They really need to know, um, like, uh, they when they study, they really need to know how to, uh, they really need to focus on how to, like, understand why part, not just memorizing the how part. And they eventually get to the how part, if they do understand why part. But if they just focus on memorizing the how part, and then um, they probably, they probably will forget that actually it's very important for them to understand why, in order to, in order for them to, uh, move higher in the hierarchy of their math study. Okay, so to best help our students um, to uh, who can uh, master all the topics in pre-algebra, we actually divide um, the other topics I mentioned uh, listed in the, the long list of the topics in that slide into four parts. And also don't want to get students um, overwhelmed. So um, so each of the, the two, the two uh, each of the four sessions in that series covers certain topics. Of course, there's a, uh, there's a sequence. And that means you should have a, a solid foundation in these topics before you move on to level two or the second class, before you move on to the, in order to have the a solid foundation of um, the, the topics covered in two in order to move on three and the four and so on and so forth. Okay, so the, here are some highlights of our pre-algebra series and these four courses. Um, at the end of the series, I'm very confident that if you uh, stick to that series and uh, um, come to the lectures and uh, be prepared to learn and also work on the homework, you will learn at least more than 80% of the common core math curriculum for the entire middle school. And uh, you will definitely uh, better understand the why part, not just memorizing the how part for all the pre-algebra concepts. You also will know how to use appropriate math language to express your ideas. Because for homeworks, uh, I, will tell, I will ask the students to, uh, for at least two word problems, they have to write down their thoughts. Okay, and so I will comment on how they express their, uh, how they express their thoughts. Just, up, just like when students start learning how to write an essay or how to compose an article. They really need someone to tell them, okay, and this is not, uh, this part can be improved, or this is not a proper way of writing this, you need to change this. They really need someone to tell them that uh, how, to, how to write a good mathematical language. And finally, and after you finish this series, uh, you can start preparing for your middle school competitions, like AMC and Math Counts. Okay, more probably you can uh, start preparing that toward the end of the series. Um, because for math competitions, there are harder uh, concepts that you need to learn further after this pre-algebra series. Okay, so now here is the um, uh, QA part. And do you have any questions for parents or students? If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to, to answer here. Are there any questions? Oh, sorry, I, I was told that my mic has some problem. Can you uh, hear me clearly now?
Okay, so no questions from parents? Dr. Yen, there is a yes. question in the chat box. Okay. Oh, sorry. So, what is the chat box? Let me take a look. Oh, all right. So, okay. Uh, could you please give us some recommendation of math book? Okay, I know I will get this question. So, the math book actually I recommend. So, basically, um, uh, I think uh, you're asking for the pre algebra part, right? Uh, so the book I will recommend, uh, which is actually a very famous one, is the uh, pre-algebra uh, pre-algebra pre-algebra book from uh, Hard Problem Solving. Probably some parents are already uh, aware of already aware of this book. This is a very well-known book, and I use that for my own child. Um, actually, kind of I asked her to read the book and uh, like to like chapter by chapter. Yes, yeah, AOPS book. Probably it's not it's, it's not a like news to most of parents here. Yeah, and of course for competition, and that will be a different book. Um, once you are ready to move on to competition and the uh, uh, AOPS has a competition math for middle school. Again, um, uh, my experience with uh, my, own, uh, my own kid and uh, some other students is that the students really need to be motivated to, uh, they really have, have strong self-motivation in order to uh, finish um, like learning by themselves because they will encounter difficulties. And then uh, you really have to have a good mentor or student to guide them uh, along, the, along the way. And they're having, um, because they are just starting the journey. Maybe when they are getting to high school and they are mature enough and to um, climb up, uh, just climb further by themselves. But having a good mentor or student or like parent uh, who can guide them along uh, during the process is very, very important so that they won't uh, get frustrated and stop um, too early into the journey. Okay, and then I have a question. Uh, uh, what kind of books good for middle schoolers but not related for you to math? Is that the same question? Oh, so um, yeah, I can, uh, maybe I can post uh, the book name um, into our WeChat group later on if parents want to know um, uh, the books that uh, I, I, mean, I highly recommend. Okay, of course there are other books. I know some parents who think of for math, uh, but I think, uh, I mean, in my opinion, um, AOPS, uh, those, those introductory books, not just pre-algebra, but also algebra book and accounting and number theories are one of the best in their kinds. And also, okay, uh, I have a, another question. Uh, actually, so that's a very common question. Um, parents tend to ask me how to get students, uh, kids motivated to study. It's not just for math, right? If the motivation issue is not just for math, it can be for even for reading or even for, uh, for, for writing and how to get them motivated to do things that they don't feel that, um, uh, they don't feel so excited of doing. I have to start very early on and also um, find out the fun part or tell them the fun part of doing uh, the math. Um, I, I think most of uh, kids have a misconception of what math is. I remember when my daughter was young and then uh, one day she told me that um, because she likes art and uh, she, she thinks herself is very creative. So one day she asked, uh, she, she told me uh, she doesn't want to uh, practice more math and asked her why. She said, well, because math will make me less creative. Oh, I was very uh, surprised when she told me that. Oh, well, she said a lot of students or even some parents of her uh, friends tell her that like art is basically opposite to math. And I was shocked when I heard this. Uh, that's really, uh, that, that's, uh, that misconception can really um, stop some uh, kids from learning math. Um, then of course, later I, I, I try to 
Um, I give her some good examples, especially uh, I kind of show her some problems, give her some problems to work on, and then she gets excited. And um, well, she realized that actually math is math can be fun, and uh, if you teach them the the right way, and also show them the um, challenging problem. And uh, probably they will feel math is less fun or it's very boring if you keep giving me giving them a repetitive worksheet to work on. And then for the sake of that, they will be very good at something. And then of course they feel bored. Right? If you can give them a worksheet with basically the same type of question with uh, except numbers are different. If you keep practicing those worksheets, then after a certain while, they feel okay, that's not interesting anymore. Yeah. So you need to give them uh, uh, giving them well chosen problems. And also, uh, again, guiding them through the way. Because when you give them well chosen problems, usually those problems are a little bit challenging. And I really enjoy working um, problem with her, but I don't usually tell her what to do. Um, I give her some hard problems, and then if she gets stuck, and she will think she will think about it by herself sometime, and then she will come ask to me. And then she knows that when she comes to me uh, for a problem, I won't give her the answer. I will only tell her uh, where she gets stuck and then give her a hint and ask her to um, keep solving the problem using the hint I gave her. And um, yeah, and uh, I, uh, I also try to encourage her to think of different ways to uh, solve a problem. Like I said, I think this is a very important part for, um, for, for, uh, for kids who really enjoy, uh, who like, why well, I think all kids like fun. And for kids uh, who, who think that math is not creative, to change their mind, to see that uh, math actually is quite creative. Okay. All right. So if there's no further questions, I think we can uh, stop here. Okay. Well, thank you all for coming. Um, yeah. So if you have questions, uh, again, I will post the books I recommend uh, into our WeChat group. Oh, one question. Sorry. Uh, if the kid shows good math ability, say at a younger age, such as uh, third to fourth grade, do you re can, uh, recommend kids start pre-algebra earlier than, oh uh, yeah, of course. Okay, actually I have a diagnosed test. Um, so if you're not sure whether um, your child is ready to study algebra study, or at least like formal ones, or the, with the questions that I present on the screen here today, um, you can uh, work, uh, you can have him or her to work on the diagnosed test, and then you, you will know whether uh, he or she is ready to take um, uh, like to learn pre-algebra at a deeper level. Okay, maybe the school um, school curriculums are easy again, depending on the school and depending on which uh, math track your student or your kid will be placed on. Yeah, so the class I will be teaching uh, pretty soon, uh, starting in May, is the pre-algebra one part. And then, uh, so these are the topics that will be covered. And in the summertime, and uh, that's the, the, the section two part. Um, this actually, uh, because that covers rate, rates, and unit of conversion, which is usually the first topic in the sixth grade. Um, yeah, so, uh, so that's in the summer. And uh, again, uh, for those topics, I will not just stick to the traditional book. I will use AOPS and uh, some competition um, problems as homework. So I will show you, uh, show students problems at different challenging levels. For some students, probably um, they are happy with, uh, start with um, like problems they can solve, but then they can get motivated and then start moving on to more challenging problems. Yeah, so all the problems will have different levels, easier, uh, like regular ones, typical ones, and then for challenging problems and the competition level problems. They can be exposed um, into different levels of difficulties for the same type of um, for the same type of topic. Okay. All right. All right. So that's all. And uh, again, thank you for all coming. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask us. And uh, you can reach us um, by uh, if you're already in WeChat group, and you can reach us um, in the WeChat group. <laughs>